The bread is taken. The bread is blessed. The bread is broken. The bread is shared. And the bread is us. We were taken. We were chosen by the Lord. The Lord who chose us, the Lord who took us, is all holy, almighty, all loving. But because the one who chose us is almighty, all good, all loving, it might enter our heads and we might begin to think that he chooses people like him. It is not so. When you look at the history of the family tree of Jesus in the Gospel of St. Matthew, you will understand that this gracious, this holy, this all-good God chooses crooked men, chooses wicked men and women to take part in the unfolding of the history of salvation. It began with Abraham, but what did Abraham do? He had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. What did he do with Ishmael? He sent Ishmael with the slave mother into the desert to die. And then there was Jacob, and then there was Esau. Jacob stealing the birthright of Esau, his brother. And then there is Judah. Judah, who was a very imperfect son, and uh, he was even in a relationship with his own daughter-in-law. There is Bathsheba, there is David, an adulterer, not only an adulterer, but a murderer of the husband of his partner. And then there were many more. And then you see, it was not just wicked men, wicked women, prostitutes, foreigners, betrayers, liars, murderers, who were chosen by the Lord to participate in the unfolding of his salvation story for all of us. We also take into consideration that there were some unknown people who took part, who were chosen by the Lord, who were taken by the Lord in history, in the salvation history, to take part in the unfolding of this family tree. What does it say of us? We belong to that category. We were taken by the Lord, but we did not belong to the group of good people, holy people, obedient people. We belong to the family of crooked men and women. And in that crookedness, God writes straight and God writes well. In other words, the decision of God to take us, the decision of God to choose us, should not make us more proud. It should rather make us more humble and recognize that we were chosen not because of, but in spite of. We were not chosen because of worthiness. We were chosen in spite of wretchedness, in spite of wickedness, and that is our story. In the life of Santa Teresa de Jesus, the devil appeared to him, appeared to her rather, disguised as the Lord Jesus. So the devil started to converse with Teresa, and Teresa thought it was the Lord, because he indeed looked like the Lord. And then after a few minutes, Teresa exclaimed, You are not my Lord. And the devil said, Yes, I am not your Lord, but how did you know? And Teresa said, My Lord has wounds. You have no wounds. We were taken by the Lord. We were chosen by the Lord. And we were wounded. We were wrinkled. We were wretched before the Lord took us. But when the Lord took us, we were wounded because of our foolishness, because of the stupidity of sin. But when the Lord chose us, he set us apart. 
and when He set us apart, our destiny is still to be wounded. But this time, to be wounded not because of sin, to be wounded because of love, to be wounded because of service. We were all taken, selected, chosen by the Lord, willingly. The Lord knows our background. The Lord also knows what we will do in the future. And yet, when he was asked, why him, why her? The Lord simply answered, I have chosen him, I have chosen her, I have written the name on the palm of my hands. That choice was marked by the history of our woundedness, and that choice is destined for greater woundedness, from the woundedness of sin to the woundedness of love to the woundedness of service. We were taken for this. This is our story. We were selected by the Lord. We were chosen by the Lord. For what? We were chosen to be saints. The Lord did not choose us just for pleasure and happiness. The Lord chose us for greatness. The Lord chose us for greatness even if we were so little, even if we were so crooked, even if we were so wicked. But the road to greatness is also the road of woundedness. Woundedness in serving, woundedness in loving. You are the bread. You have been taken from your crooked story to the wounded story that will unfold later on. Let this choice of the Lord lead us to greater encouragement. Do not look at your crooked past. Look rather at the one who has loved you in spite of who you are. Again in the life of Santa Teresa de Jesus, one morning she came down from the cloister and she saw a little boy playing in the cloister of the monastery. Surprised because their convent was not an orphanage and they did not have children in the monastery, Teresa asked the boy, Good morning, my name is Teresa de Jesus. What is your name? And the boy said, My name is Jesus de Teresa. Jesus of Teresa. We were taken because the Lord wanted us to belong to Him. It is good news. But you know what is better news? We were chosen because the Lord wanted to say to us, I belong to you. We have different surnames. We have different family names. But actually, our common surname is the Jesus of Jesus. We all belong to Jesus. And the, the Lord has also declared he belongs to us. What does it mean to belong to the Lord? To belong to the Lord is to submit everything to Him. To belong to the Lord is to submit our freedom to Him. There is a teenage understanding of freedom that misinterprets freedom as freedom from. Freedom from the family rules. Freedom from the school rules. Freedom from the ethical rules. And if you are free from all of these young people, teenage people, adolescent people, unfortunately, immature people say they are free. But real freedom, real belonging to the Lord, and real all of us belonging to Him is not just freedom from, but freedom to. Freedom to love, freedom to share, Freedom to be who you are. Freedom to be the great man, the great woman that God has destined you to be. We all need to obey. Why do we need to obey? 
because obedience is the antidote to arrogance. If we have no one to obey, if we have no one to submit our lives to, we will all become bloated with egoism, bloated with arrogance. This is our destiny. We were taken by the Lord to belong to Him. And to belong to Him is to submit our freedom to Him. But when our freedom is submitted to the Lord, it does not make us slaves. When our freedom is totally submitted to the Lord, it makes us totally free because it gives us the freedom to live and love like Him. That is the meaning of being taken. To be taken is to belong to Him. To be taken is to realize that God has chosen to belong to us. It is a beautiful story. You will not be able to understand how much God loves you. You will not be able to understand the depth and the height of the mystery of God's love for you. Because if you would understand, you would die. It is a great mystery. This choice of the Lord, this being selected by the Lord, can only be understood in heaven. Submit your freedom to Him as He has submitted His total freedom in obedience to the Father. Love is obedient, and those who obey, love best. There can be no story of being taken, being selected by the Lord, without a story of obedience. Freedom, not just freedom from, but freedom to be who you really are. A great soul, a great man, a great woman of the Lord. COVID-19 is a worldwide pandemic. But one of the consequences of COVID-19 is the pandemic of depression, the pandemic of loneliness, the pandemic of despair. What is despair? Despair is not just losing hope. Despair is not just giving up. What is despair? It is the loss of the element of surprise. What I want to talk to you about now is that you were taken by the Lord by surprise. And the Lord is the Lord of surprises. That is why we have no reason for despair. We have no reason to get discouraged because there is always a surprise waiting to unfold from the hand of the Lord. What does it mean when we say we were taken by the Lord by surprise? It does not mean that out of the blues, from, from nowhere, the Lord just decided to choose us. No. The Lord has chosen us even before time began. But when we say God is a God of surprises and we were taken by surprise, by the Lord of surprises, what I mean is God uses unexpected, unexplored means in order to show to us His tenderness and His love for us. Taken by surprise. Taken by wonder. Taken by awe. You who, are, who compose the university community, the academic community, including even our non-teaching personnel, you know the meaning of IQ, which is intelligence quotient. It is measured by an exam, and uh, there are verbals and non-verbals in order to test our intelligence. And years ago, people thought that the higher the IQ, the higher the possibility of success. But it did not turn out to be so. Now we are talking about EQ, which is emotional quotient. 
emotional quotient is not just intelligence, it is rather the capacity to work in a team, to love, to be a friend. It is the capacity to enjoy company, to live in community. But we still notice that even if people have high IQ and high emotional quotient, there seems to be still something lacking. And some psychologists are talking about WQ. And what is WQ? It is wonder quotient. The capacity to be awed. The capacity to be caught by surprise. The capacity to dream dreams. The capacity to see visions. What would life be if we are not capable of being surprised anymore? What would life be if we do not like to believe in visions anymore? You know, there comes a point in our lives when we say, I have tried all of that, it did not work. There comes a point in our lives when we say, I have approached all the experts and they did not help me. They did not succeed at all. There comes a point in our lives when we start to think that we are at the end of the road and we are not going anywhere else. Despair is the loss of the sense of surprise, the sense of awe, the sense of wonder. That we are taken by the Lord should surprise us because there are more deserving brothers and sisters than us. That we are taken by the Lord should surprise us because the Lord is all good and we are perfectly the opposite. And yet, why did the Lord choose us? Because the Lord loves us. And why does the Lord love us? I don't know. It is a mystery. And we just have to live with this mystery. And this mystery, this element of wonder, this element of awe, is the one that will carry us through. When we lose that sense of mystery, when we lose that sense of vision and dream, then we lose our hope and we have nothing to look forward to anymore. Taken. Taken by surprise. And uh, as the Americans say, you ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Keep your hearts open to the Lord. Keep your minds open to the Lord. Keep yourself open to the Lord, to the surprises of the Lord. Because the Lord will never run out of surprises. He has taken you from long before. He will continue to take you and He will never get tired of, take, of taking you because the love of the Lord is constant. The love of the Lord endures forever. His love is always a surprise. And before the Lord, we will always be children. Children totally dependent on Him. Children caught in awe, caught in wonder. Children who dream dreams and make those dreams come true. Until now, we have talked about the Lord taking us. The Lord taking us even if we are crooked. The Lord taking us, asking us to surrender his, our freedom to Him. The Lord taking us in spite of who we are. The Lord taking us by surprise. Continuing our meditation on the word taken, I would like to invite you to look at it the other way around. The Lord has taken you completely. Have you taken the Lord home? Have you taken Him home? And have you taken Him to your heart? When we say we take the Lord, when we say we take the Lord home to our hearts, home to our souls, we mean that our choices should reflect the reality that we belong to Him. In a few days, it is going to be election. And we are going to vote for national and local leaders. My request to all of you is to take the Lord with you when you vote. Unfortunately, Jesus is not a registered voter in the Philippines. 
you are. But the Lord wants to vote, and He wants to vote through you. Take the Lord with you when you decide. Take the Lord with you when you choose. And look for the Lord among the candidates. How shall we show humanity? How shall we show our country that we are taking the Lord in our decision, that we belong to the Lord? I offer three Ks. The first K is consentia. Listen to your conscience. You have heard it, gas gas na. Vote according to your conscience. Your conscience is the voice of God. It is the voice that tells you this is right and this is wrong. It is the voice that tells you this is a sin and this will lead you to holiness. Listen to that voice of conscience. Don't let anyone, not money, not anything, to dictate on you. Vote according to your conscience because voting according to your conscience means that you have taken the Lord into your heart, into your soul. The second K I want to offer you is katuwiran. It is reason. It is intellect. It is logic. It is to analyze and then having analyzed, come to fitting conclusions. Don't just say basta. Don't just say respect my opinion. Don't just say this is my choice. God has given you the gift of intelligence. God has give, given you the gift of reason, the gift of logic. Use it. Your faith in God coupled with reason, when you put that together, when you put reason and faith together, is going to lead you to the reality that you really belong to the Lord. We reach the Lord by faith. We also reach the Lord by reason. In the tradition of the fathers of the church, the doctors of the church, use your reason to prove that you have taken the Lord not only into your heart, but even to your mind, that my mind belongs to God, my heart belongs to God, my whole life belongs to God. The third K that I would like you to remember is kapwa tao. Kapwa tao, especially the poor, especially the youth. Prove your love for the Lord. Prove that you belong to the Lord. Prove that you have taken the Lord into your soul by your concern for the treasures of the Lord. And the treasures of the Lord are the poor and the children. The Lord said, unless you become like little children, you cannot belong to his kingdom. And whatever you do to the least of your brothers and sisters, you do to me. When you vote, prove to everyone that the Lord has possessed you. The Lord has taken you. You have taken the Lord. It is not just that the Lord has taken you, but allow the Lord to rule over your life. The Lord has taken you. Take the Lord also and show the Lord, show Christianity, show the church, show society that your vote is the vote of Jesus. Consentia, katuwiran, Kapwatao. If you put all of these K's together, you will be able to prove on election day and in the years ahead, the Lord has taken me. I have taken the Lord and this is my proof.